Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Emana Amawe. Coming up on the program today, Senate President Bukola Saraki begins his defense at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Ahead of the 2019 elections, we monitor the progress of INEX continuous voter registration. And the grandmother and her nephew are arrested in Oshun State for child abuse. Welcome to the program that brings you news from the north, south, east and west of Nigeria. The Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, has begun his defense before the Code of Conduct Tribunal. This follows the ruling of the Appeal Court that he has a case to answer with respect to three out of 18 count charges brought against him by the EFCC. The Senate President's counsel, Paul Usoro, is also calling four defense witnesses, including Dr. Ademola Adebo, who is a commissioner with the Code of Conduct Bureau. A three-man panel of, of the appeal court, led by Justice Tinua Dave Wilson Akomolafe, had on December the 12th, 2017, nullified 15 out of the 18 counts charge brought against the Senate President. The appellate court then ordered that the press Senate President defend himself on counts 4, 5 and 6 which had to do with how he acquired his properties at number 17 A and B McDonald Street, Ikoi, Lagos. And voters across the country have been advised to register for the 2019 general elections to enable them to exercise their franchise. At the polls, the Independent National Electoral Commission's continuous voter registration exercise is still on as the electoral umpire says it has not stopped registering voters. There are, however, there's been a series of concerns, however, from Nigerians about issues relating to logistics, long hours of waiting and reissuance of the voter cards. Channels Television is monitoring the process across the country and our political correspondent, Shion Joaquim Baloye, takes us through the process. If you take a look at what is happening here, this is where the biometrics and the capturing process takes place. Uh, if I just quickly show you, uh, this is the officer who will register voter here. And so what happens, this is the camera and there's a system in which all the registration will happen. That's a biometric uh, com uh, computer system over there where all of these uh, get to happen. But l l let's quickly speak with the electoral officer here, Mr. Gabriel uh, Tyre, who will give us a sense of how long this will take and just how well they're working on this exercise. Mr. Tyre, thank you for your time on Channels Television. Uh, there seems not to be so much people here. What exactly is happening and how are you going about this exercise? Yeah, the reason why we don't have people, we just came in here yesterday and they are just beginning to be aware of this center. But I can assure you by tomorrow the place will be filled up because we are moving from center to center. We spent 10 days here, after that we moved to another location. How do you educate people? How do you tell people that you have moved to a certain center? We, we, we have a stakeholders meeting, we have a timetable and we told all the councillors to educate the people around their areas. We meet with the LCDA chairman and they've already informed them, so people are getting aware of it. The former governor of Sokoto State, Mr. Tahiru Bafarawa, has blamed the federal government for failing to nip the lingering headsman farmers' crisis in the bud, especially in Benue State. The former governor believes the Minister of Agriculture, who is from Benue State, could have worked with Governor Samuel Otom to evolve a solution to the crisis. He also agrees that ranching is the right thing to do, given the increasing population and farming practices, but he appeals for patience and sustained enlightenment campaigns for those in that region. The land is not growing, but the population is growing. It's a good thinking, but anything that is new, before people accept it, it used to bring problem. As he mentioned to us that uh, he allows some grazing time for the load to take off. Well, it's a good thing, but uh, you know anything that is new, more especially with illiteracy, is not going to be easy to understand. So I think the federal government have to come in and see how they can put their head together and solve this problem. Very unfortunate situation. 
which had just occurred because the Minister of Agriculture is from Binway State. Besides that, both Binway State and also the national government is all controlled by APC. So it's very disappointing for what had happened to happen because if the two laws are going to put together, it's just they are supposed to sit down, agree to each other, it's the same government, the same party, and uh, as I've said earlier, the Minister of Agriculture is from Binway State. So I think the mistake is, right from the beginning, they didn't put their heads together. Unless they put their, their, their heads together, then we can move, they can move forward, or rather we can move forward. Still on security, the ongoing counterinsurgency operations in northeast Nigeria, including the border between Nigeria and Cameroon, has been boosted with the induction of Cameroonian troops into the Operation Lafia Dole. The operations theater commander, Major General Rogers Nicholas, who received the Cameroonian soldiers in Goza, Bernou State, asked them to be professional and courageous in discharging their duties. It is a gathering of officials from Nigeria and Cameroon to discuss security challenges at the sixth session of the Cameroon-Nigeria Trans-Border Security Meeting in Abuja. The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs kick-starts the meeting with a word of commitment from the Nigerian government. This collaboration has resonated in the dissemination of the threat posed by the Boko Haram terrorist group in recent years. Although there are still some challenges to overcome in the northeastern region of Nigeria, the present administration of President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, is committed to the restoration of constitutional order in the affected areas. Moreover, the recent challenges in the Anglophone-speaking region of Cameroon has unsettling but a strain on the peace security and economic prosperity of the people in the region and deserve a careful resolution. The head of the Cameroonian delegation and Minister of Territorial Administration and Decentralization advocates a strong cooperation to curb the menace of trans-border security threats. We must not lose sight of the fact that the path towards total and complete security along our common border is still full of obstacles. As a matter of fact, new security challenges show up every day and require more diligence on our part. For aggrieved Cameroon citizens in Nigeria, the National Security Advisor warns against the use of Nigeria as a breeding ground to destabilize another country. It is critical for me to re-emphasize that His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari assures you that we will take all necessary measures within the ambit of the law to ensure that Nigeria's territory is not used as a staging area to destabilize another friendly sovereign country. This is because we expect people who visit or reside in this country to play by our rules in the interests of peace and security. The two-day meeting, which continues behind closed doors, is expected to examine issues of trans-border security challenges between both countries, in addition to building on the successes so far recorded in the actualization of peace and security. When news across Nigeria returns, a 53-year-old woman has been arrested by the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps for abusing her granddaughter. Details in a moment.